And boom, we are live. Wait, are we live? There's Aquaria. You know, Aquaria is technically a little more broad. Yeah. Not only describes, you know, the aquarium, but it also is a term that describes all of the life forms, everything that has to do with aquarium. I knew there was going to be a method to the madness. Uh, so uh, yeah. Aqua Lab Aquaria. Hmm. Aquaria is what describes all life forms? It describes, like, Thank you. the bigger umbrella term of aquariums and, and everything related to it. Right. So this is Ken. It's my good buddy. This is uh, my fellow alumni. Kyle stopped by. He's trying to act like he's not here. I didn't, I didn't even know. It's awesome to, to see him. And, uh, yeah, basically wanted to – you guys check out his business. I'm really proud of this uh, dude. I'll, I'll take some pictures uh, here later. But um, – how do we know each other? You can check out the website if you want to oh, see yes. some more about the store. LavaLiveAquaria.com. Plug. Shameless plug. I, I, I love this. Yeah, you can go live on Google Chrome, by the way. I tried on Safari. You thought it didn't work. Uh, but Chrome apparently was all that it uh, it takes. But keep talking. So same thing I wanted to say to you. Why the hell Why the hell did you do this? Why did you start this? Why? Um. More or less, it was something I felt I loved. I felt that I had a lot of domain expertise in, and that when I looked at it, it felt like you know an industry ready for disruption. It, I felt like I could really make an impact. And uh, I had actually, this wasn't the first business this I started. Before I got the aquariums off the ground, I was uh, building motorcycles, believe it or not. Right. You were always into bikes, dude. You were a hardcore BMXer. <laughs> Shout out to Sylvandale Middle School. That's where you and Mo. We're, well, we're from, uh, the, which, which I love that, because that's like the feeder into Andrew Hill, but can't get your ass in here, man. You got fans. Uh, I, I, sh I should have been on my personal and see if I could still tag people on it. But that's okay. We'll, we'll share it uh, later. This is a good thing. On my, on my personal, there's not going to be as many people. A 1,000 versus 100 uh, likes, but I'll share the link uh, after. I cut you off, though. You're doing uh, motorcycles. You're building those for just custom bikes. Right, so I was building custom vintage motorcycles. I was also getting into building kits and selling gloves and stuff. Just trying to you know, make money off something I was interested in. But it was actually after doing that for about a year that I pivoted into aquariums when I, I came to the realization that actually that's what I needed to be doing. You and I felt to be doing? That's what I needed to be doing, and it also just made more sense to me. I thought it was a bigger, more lucrative market to go after. Mm -hmm. So just from a you know, business sustainability sense, mm -hmm. I felt that it was the right move to make. Yeah. Nice. Don't talk like that like it's a QA, okay? This is not <laughs> a freaking <laughs> that Q. Uh, these, these answers are not prepared, you know. Just, just no, that's, that's good. The cuff. That, that's what I like. You said, uh, so yeah, I got into aquariums and it's something I've done as obvious for years now. And uh, I felt like we could add something to it. But you said domain. So you went to UCLA. This guy's way smarter than he looks. Don't. Uh, uh, what was what was that like there? Besides all the, the beautiful women. Sorry, wife. UCLA uh, is awesome. Great school. Uh, really tough to get into. Most people know that. But what what the neuroscience? What were yeah. you trying to do there? So you know, I was going to do the usual. Go get my pre med qualifications. Go to the Morgan school. Blakely thing. Similar to what my brother did. Um, so I ended up applying to UCLA for a neuroscience degree, Bachelor of Science, and got in. And that is what I actually graduated with and a minor in biomedical research. So I was, you know, I was down that path, pretty right. deep down the rabbit hole. Right. And I made a pretty major change in my life uh, towards the end of college, mm -hmm. which actually, you probably don't know this, but I was trying to get into the military to become a pilot physician. Cool. So I took so I took. A break from you know the school route to mm -hmm. to pursue that. I thought about that too. What, what that, that was that what up in the Air Force, right? I was trying to get in the Air Force, yeah, and uh, get going through OTS. So there's a few ways to get into the Air Force, and especially to get a pilot slot. Uh, my last option that I had because I had already got my bachelor's was OTS, Officer Training School. Because if I could do it all over again, I would have probably gone to AFROTC, which is something you do during college, and you're, you're guaranteed a, a slot as a pilot. So, and so what, what you would you be a pilot? Keep that in mind. Yeah, what made, what made you change uh, your, your mind uh, with that? And that's totally okay. It's a lifestyle. You got some well, talents. I didn't get it. You know, one of my biggest upsets. Uh, I applied twice. Colton's doing that. He is, yeah. yeah it's yeah, pretty yeah. awesome. He's cool. definitely doing that. 
Um, I applied twice and they offered me a weapons system officer position, which is basically co-pilot. Mm. And I said, no, thank you, because I, I, if I was going to be owned by the military, it was going to be on my terms as much as possible. Mm. And I wanted that pilot slot. Yeah. Hey, when, when, when Uncle Sam sure. pays you, you're going to call him another shot. The reason I said Cole was yeah. like, uh, you could even ask him. I literally reached out to him. I was thinking about it. Seriously, I know that after a certain age, right, you can't, like 33 or something. Uh, it's true. Um, you're supposed to get your wings by the age of, I believe, 30 or 33. It could be. Yeah. You need to enter by 30, which means you're wrapping up by about 33 or so after all the pilot training programs. But that's true, you know, and to be in the Air Force, you know, for example, I had to get plastic surgery on my ears because I used to have gauges in college. Oh, and, yeah. And it's a, dis it's a medical disqualifier. You're that guy. I was that, you know, that. That Those are hard to like plug up after too, right? I have plastic surgery to get it sewn up essentially because it would be medically disqualifying in the Air Force. You know, you can see light through your piercings. Uh, oh, so, you know, I was serious, man. You know, I was right. I was going down that path and unfortunately it didn't work out. Is there a bike shop close by? Is there a BMX with a Neither. Okay. There's a bike shop, Mike's Bikes, but That's not BMX specialty or anything. Right. Um, yeah, I don't want to be that guy to... I still don't get why aquariums. Why the hell did you want to? Besides liking them, besides the hobby, there's. I know that I'm sure there's a whole universe to them. We're gonna talk about that. But did you have aquarium back in the day? At the house, like what? What really triggered it for you? Just besides being lucrative. It's a good question, and uh, I, I've done a lot of thinking about it, and I feel like it, it's become a little more clear. But like growing up, I did have aquariums, and like some of my most young memories, if I really had to dig deep, are. Paul, I recall hanging out at the aquarium and right. doing stuff with it. Right, right. So that, I mean, that means something. It's not right. something I really realized until lately. But right. the other thing is too, like growing up, uh, we were living near Gold Shopping Center over there yeah. in East San Jose, and there was a place called Fantasy Pets. Was that McLaughlin? Off McLaughlin. Yeah, McLaughlin. Being a little fat, and little schooler, and always at McDonald's. There was Fantasy right next door. I would always want to go. Always wandering there. I was chilling always there. Geeked out in there. That's why I started trying to think about the turtles. The only thing we had to get turtles because yeah, you want fishes, but you're like, God, I can't grab anything, right? It's, you, know, uh, you bring up an interesting point. It's true. Yeah, so somebody said that those were illegal or they could you sick or turtles are an interesting thing. It's illegal to sell baby turtles apparently. Yeah, okay, they were baby turtles. Uh, it's like a risk. Okay, it's a salmonella risk, and we don't do baby turtles. I have a little bit of a qualm with a large animal like that. Unless you're looking to provide it with a pond or something adequate, mm -hmm. you really shouldn't be keeping that sort of animal. A fish, Especially around young kids, right? Sure. I mean, it's fine. Just they shouldn't be handling it like it's a, a puppy. Yep. Because it's not that type of pet. And they may not wash their hands after all that. Right. Crap, right? But, um, you know, I know. not A lot of people that are interested in pets and interested in these hobbies that you're not petting the thing, but you're really actually cultivating it. You're observing it grow and mature before your eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's more of the right mindset for aquariums. Mm -hmm. you know. And that's one thing we're trying to actually change is that for a long time, aquariums have been lumped in with the pet industry. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to a pet store where they're selling dog and bird, but there's a I was looking at your competitors. They usually combine both. Very few are. Big box stores right. are like this and other big you know, online retailer stuff. And I think that's all wrong because mm -hmm. – that type of customer, you know, like you said, they want companionship. Right. They want something uh, cuddly. And frankly, that's, that's a sign that they probably don't know as much as they should. They right? want something that doesn't have as high of a learning curve. Right. And the thing is, the truth is, aquariums do. So really, we're trying to go after more of the gardeners, right. the interior decorators, the designers, mm -hmm. people who, who are a little more technically geared and are willing to invest the time in learning the requisite knowledge to be successful. Mm -hmm. Because, it, again, like a dog, it sleeps, it eats, it poos, and you know, the basics, it's hard right. to mess up. Right. In an aquarium, there's so much that goes beyond the eye and beyond the sea that right. makes it challenging. That's what, that's what I want to talk about is I saw a bunch of different algae, and I'm sure that there is a whole universe to that. What, what is, talk about that. What, what is it that So our, our types of aquariums are unique. Anything. Our aquariums are unique because instead of, you know, what a lot of Americans have in their mind, you think of an aquarium, they probably think of this big tank with like rainbow gravel, there's a treasure chest that's bubbling up and down, and there's a big floating fish that's sort of just, you know, floating around. Right, right. And, uh, you know, look, it's each their own. That's, you know, that is an old school aquarium sort of uh, style. What we right. do is it's more of an ecosystem, and so it's not just fish, but we're bringing all the other elements uh, of earth and, you know, 
both living and not living, right. into the aquarium to provide them with a very, you know, good replication of their natural environment. And not only that, you get a really beautiful, visually interesting aquarium. And often they'll die if they don't, right? Is that, is that the point of having different types of algae? Is algae it? Help to keep things clean. Or it does. What is the main reason of that? Way. Well, the main reason to have the this an ecosystem driven aquarium. I mean, there's a few reasons. One is functional. Uh, when you're using natural biological processes to help maintain this ecosystem, right. yes, the algae, the plants, the corals are actually filters. They're removing waste. They're competing with the ugly algae. Mm -hmm. They're oxygenating the water. They're doing all sorts of biological functions that are beneficial. Right. But even more importantly to most of the hobbyists is that you get to see something that you otherwise don't get to. And when you look at coral and stuff, some of it's out of this world. Like people are, can't believe that these things are on our planet. Right. And and people who have that knowledge, they totally appreciate it. They do. Like I'm sure the, the story on that, I was looking through real quick and then I saw that lost guy was acrylic and I was like, yeah, damn, well, that's pretty cool. It looked really sleek. Right. But it was, right, 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 it was right, propped, it was propped away in a way that, that Right, so so I'm sure there was a whole thought process to make sure that you know nobody you got to be really drunk and really dive in to break that thing. Right? Is that what, what is what does acrylic mean? What is it? That's just the outside material. Right, acrylic is a, uh, usually a transparent material, and it's one that's used often for building the actual aquarium display. But it's also used a lot of times for different components because it's so resistant to salt water, which is really nasty. So it's just a good aquarium material. Right. So if you're going to get a fish that has to be you're crazy and you want something with salt water, then you want to use acrylic. Or? You don't have to, but here's when you want to use acrylic. Acrylic is really good and you have a really unique shape. It's easier to form acrylic into unusual shapes and, and curves and things like that. And also when you get to, you know, big massive aquariums, like in public aquariums, to create those big panels, uh, acrylic is often chosen as well because you can just get it really thick and right. it's really strong. And it's bullet, you know, it's actually, people don't realize, but acrylic is bulletproof glass. Really? Yeah. So it's really strong, but it scratches really easily. That's one of its biggest flaws. So, and, and if you ask me personally, I find glass to be a more attractive, more luxurious material as the well. Lighting. Yeah. yeah. It just, you know, it sparkles on the corners and uh, it, it has properties that are good, like scratch resistance and things like that. So both are popular. They I'm have so, their place. I'm so glad we got to do this. I'm like, man, we're not going to be able to, to walk around, but. This is just, check out what I just posted uh, in a Los Gatos piece. It's beautiful. You had to meet up with a client to check out for any builders out there, right? This is the guy you, you, you want to talk to. Just tell me, you don't, obviously you don't have to name any names, but just in general, at the end of the day, you got to just make them happy, right? It's all about whatever they want and you adapt to like to do that, right? Because they own our business, right? We don't own the business of clients. It's, it's true. you got to bend over backwards to over deliver for your customers and delight them. And I you know customer service is central to our business and our mm -hmm. success. You know, if you look at a lot of testimony, a lot of it is about that. And in a, in a hobby and, and an activity that is can be so challenging, mm -hmm. you really got to feel supported, I think, mm -hmm. to get invested in this. Mm -hmm. And that's probably a huge referral business, kind of like uh, mine, where you know, there's people that know each other and you do a good oh, job. Like, oh, yeah. He knows the shit. Go to, go to camp. Right? You, you know, aquarium shops are destinations. And when you become established in the region, mm -hmm. we already have people coming from Salina, San Francisco, and the greater Bay Area. But uh, it really will give you a good reputation. And I was talking to you earlier. So you go to their spot, which is huge, right? I was talking about the convenience of time. At the end of the day, that's what people want is because you know, they want that, but it's very, very tough to, to know everything and keep it. It's like little Nemo, right. little Nemo's know, over there. We're a full-service mm -hmm. shop. So many of our clients are successful people who are way too busy to be maintaining an aquarium. And the truth is it takes work. Right. And it takes TLC. It's like a garden. If you don't tend to it regularly – it's not going to look as pristine as you might want. Right. So, you know, a lot of times the, the pH, right? The pH is going to change. In everything way. is changing and right. fluctuating, depleting, increasing, and you're trying to keep everything stable. That's the you know, name of the game. There's no fancy, you know, products or anything. It's about basic understanding of what's going on in the aquarium, the science behind it. And what do fishes do in the real world? They're down in the ocean, if it, they're not feeling it, it's when you think of it, that's when they're going to go to warmer areas or what works for them right but you're in, a, you're in a contained environment so that's why it's probably much tougher than it would be in the the ocean well you know honestly today i don't know if that's so much the case right global bleaching you know the ocean is becoming an inhospitable place for our Japan. Our, the, the species yes right, right. radioactivity there's all sorts Texas, of issues uh, alabama with the whole oil spill 
Our uh, ocean is getting raped, you know, like, right, and, right. and I hate to use a, right. an intense term. It's all good. That is I really, like, stuff. that's really how it should be because right. really we're, we're, we're killing it. And nonetheless, um, actually, I feel like our, well, hey, as long as we keep having more melting water, 75%, we shouldn't be doing it. That's the bottom line, right? You know, our parents are a very, actually ideal environment for these animals, probably more so than wild can right now. Right. Unfortunately. This is good. I, I didn't, want, didn't want to go on any of these. Uh, so, if anybody watching, any fishes that you recommend for kids and so forth? Oh, by the way, yeah, That's hello cool. to Nikki, hello to Serena. I see all these bio majors okay. popping up. Um, but I'll, I'll share this on to my uh, personal. So, what do you recommend for kids that's kind of basic? I mean, it all depends on that mom and dad what they want. Well, before I go to that, what did you want from, uh, from today? What was his? Spiel to you. He gave you the needs. This is what I'm looking for, right? I'm sure. You're talking about a client. Yes, yes, yes. So the deal with him is he's a looks like a successful accountant. He has an accountant tax uh, firm, and they're just doing a bunch of remodeling. He thought it would be awesome to have a, a built-in custom apartment. And so, <clears throat> of course, he brought us in to consult with him, and he it looks like he's pretty serious about following through on this. And you get back to him now with the design. Proposal. And he's a numbers guy. Come on, how much? I'm oh, sure he is. Yeah. Another question. I think I'm sure. The range is tough because it's whatever the hell you want, right? You can you can you can go nuts. I told him the first thing first thing I talked no. first thing I talked about was that uh, a gigolo movie from my dumb brain. The only thing I think of is somebody bashing into that. Obviously, something like that is humongous, right? Versus something small. What would you be looking at for you know your smallest typical S price range? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, aquariums. Can be such a there can be such a vast range of prices. Yeah, and, yeah. But let's say you know the most simple setup can be a bowl with a beta and a few elements in that. You're, you're talking a hundred bucks. Right. Really, a, a small investment to get going. Mm -hmm. But of course, the crimps can get to hundreds of thousands, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for even a residential aquarium. You can have a wrap all the way around the house. And, you no, know, it doesn't even have to be big. But if you employ a lot of technology and you employ a lot of just nice, you know, equipment and things like that, world class stuff. You know, we're, it's a machine that's complex, as complex as a car, I just of, and it costs I as much. Of as old sack right in. My wife took me there. And there's like a dive bar there, where it's literally yeah. like a human with the mermaid. Uh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I go taking to, uh, taking turns. Uh, reach out to them. Be like, hey, you got what's this price? I'll be this way. But I'm sure there's no fishes in there, so it's not going to be yeah. as complicated. It's going to be chlorine. It's going to be probably whatever. will be chlorinated. Yeah, um, that was an interesting project. Play, play I waterfall too. That's yeah, awesome. don't remind me. Yeah, no, but still, I think I think it's tough as shit. I mean, uh, we had to tread water for thirty seconds of exhaust, and people underestimate how tough that sport is. You know? I mean, it is tough, yeah. And then, like, what's going on underneath the water? I mean, you, you got guys like realize. Matt Avila on your team is probably a lot tougher than you have to. You got, a, you got dead weight, right? <laughs> Just kidding, Busting your balls, Matt. His wife's an attorney. Don't, don't come. Uh, I love me, but uh, so yeah, man, well, I'm proud of you. Nobody. People don't want to take the leap like you took, and uh, obviously it's not not easy. A lot of stressful times, and um, a lot of times you think, "Should why, why am I doing this? I should be doing better." But it happens, man. I, I, the reason I'm here is I know things are going to work out because you're doing what you love and you're playing the long game, right? Um, we are. We like are. You, you leased this spot, right? We'll, we'll talk about uh, that after. We didn't talk to Aaron. It's been pretty chill. You guys have a couple minutes. So it's been interesting. I have we have three rentals in the business. This is our main okay. public facing rental. Uh, it's a unique arrangement. I share the space with the tattoo removal business, and he's actually still on the lease. He still uses the facility, um, but we actually just renewed two years here. So we're going to be at this space at least for another two years, and you know we get a great deal. Our co tenant is awesome. I got to give him a plug. New skin tattoo. If you need to get your tattoos removed, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Great rates, great service, great people. Oh, he does removals um, too. They do tattoo yeah. removal. That's it's all. Getting big, yeah. It's getting big, yeah. Yeah, and he does a lot of special government programs, assisting people who want to get rehabilitated, whatever. New skin tattoo removal. Like, yeah. No, I've services. seen that a lot in our green area. You've seen signs going up, by the tenning and so forth, like off so, the freeway. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're looking for more people to do that as well. But I, I, want, sure I, want, a, I want a tangent, so. This is a CPA, he just remodeled, he wants something new, right? What do you think is a recommendation for kids, for, for people that want to start small? Uh, is there anything specific that they should be? Yeah, I would, I would point them in a few 
particular direction. One is, you know, keep it simple and, and cheap. Make sure you want to get into it. Um, again, a beta bowl is a really good way to get into it as a child. We actually have, though, had a few really young kids come in and sort of up the ante a little. They got a small nano kit that we sell. It's actually, we have one over there. But uh, That was more like something that was in your room, right? Yeah, so it's in their little room. It's a five-gallon tank, very manageable. We have it set up as a kit that, you know, when you buy this, you're ready to grow plants and have freshwater fish. And, and that client has fresh. He's had a lot of success. His first time, I, you know, I swear, he's like third or fourth grade, very young. So that's where I would point people is a freshwater aquarium. Keep it simple. I do recommend going with plants, easy plants, and uh, you can get your first taste of success on a pretty cheap budget. What is that over there? Money is always in pounds. Is up? Oh, so that poster, you know, you know, there's a whole culture surrounding reefing. Uh, so like I gave my mask and coral too, right? Coral, you know, there's now art that's coming out. There's a whole lifestyle and culture around reefing is what we call reef keeping or having a reef aquarium. Not that type of reef. And not that type of reefer. <laughs> but uh, if you're a reefer, you keep a reef aquarium. And, uh, you know, there's a big culture around it. There's a lot of, there's now actually a corals farmer's market that happens here in the Bay Area. Uh, where everyone gets together, sells and trades coral that they've grown and things like that. The farmers market for fish for people, coral for, for coral for specifically, yeah, for reef people. And corals, corals alive. Corals alive. The corals are really interesting. I don't know. It's just just about to this. go, you know, a little laughing. biology <laughs> lesson on it. You know, corals are half plant, half animal, um, and so they look like a plant. Most people think they're a plant, but they actually have mouths. They have tentacles. They eat food. But they also so is, so is algae. Algae alive, technically? Algae is alive, yeah. Well, any biology besides technically? A cell is alive, it's a definition, you know, one of the definitions. But See, all the bio background that you had to go through to be a doctor actually prepared you for it's this it. and got you into this. And that's what we forget. We, we think the little stepping stones in the, in the background, they're actually, I think it's on their own path, right? They're all, they're all building. Yeah, it, it wasn't for, for not, right? Even though I didn't go to medicine, it definitely did give me a solid time. To Hashtag try. pathology cases, Morgan. We'll talk about that. I'm glad he's doing uh, that. Have you gone to St. George's? Visit him yet? No, he's he's in New oh. York. Oh, he's in New York now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was graduated. Uh, oh, he did from St. George's. Yeah, he did his graduation in New York already and everything. Yeah. So now he's probably got the whole fellowship. Now he's got fellowship, fellowship in New York. He stayed in New York. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. So he's busy out there. He, you know, guess what? He got his first aquarium. He okay. got one of our nano kits, and he's dabbling, and I think he's he's enjoyed it. He's had. He's had a lot of success too, without you know a lot of difficulty. And he's also talked about one day when he would like to get a reef aquarium. He's what what is difficulty when your fish is dying? Uh, of course, fish die. Fish die for a lot of mysterious reasons. For a lot of things that are out of our I saw a hashtag uh, aquarium step. Well, that was like the third or fourth, and I assume that probably means aquarium stuck. Yeah, is actually all these bubbles you hear things actually getting stuck in. in uh, it or yeah, there's things that can get stuck. Stupid ash, no, know. no, there's like pumps that can get stuck in the things and it can seize and, and you know stop operating. That's one uh, way you can ruin it. That's certainly equipment failure is one way. User error. Again, there's a lot of things out of our control. Like unfortunately, there are still some not so great practices when it comes to collecting animals that can lead to chronic issues with them, and then one day they just croak and it's sort of like mysterious. Right. There's a whole also smorgasbord. You would, really, and, you know, who's going to, you know... Throw well, well, if more than that. one die, then you could start to think, okay, it's the environment. I get what you're saying. It could have nothing, True. To, There's it could have nothing to do with, with you, right? You know, I, I tell a lot of people, it's like being, I know, I hate to glorify it too much, but it's like being a physician in that, you know, you read your textbook and there's really these good. cases, but every case is unique. You have to troubleshoot, you have to investigate mm -hmm. to really, you know, Get to the root of the problem. Often, it's I, not I think, I think veterinarians are totally underrated too. It's the exact same. same. I would think that that their life is actually far more complicated than, than because you have human species and then you have a whole bunch of different species that can't communicate. Right, right? you just right. have to get information in other ways. Right, yeah, yeah. it can be a challenge. But with vets, it's probably all over the place. Where you just snake, horse, this, that. <laughs> the learning for that is probably. Twice well, you know, vets specialize. So usually, and usually, a, a really good hospital will have specialists that are one's a herpetologist, meaning they specialize in reptiles. Mm -hmm. Another one, maybe horses. Another one, maybe small mammals. Their own, their own niche. Right. right. I say that because I have a lot of respect for them. Was it least you're younger than she probably know better than I do. Rachel, I think. I think she was at Ambrosia as well. I don't know. Okay. Rachel, uh, Nick's brother, Nick Burton, could. 
Yes, it sounds right. right. That sounds correct. Yes, yes. If you, I say because she's a vet, right? Is she? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully we got... No, no, not working. I know who you're thinking of. I know who you're thinking of. So this was uh, Rachel. I think, I think uh, Ambrosia, but just seeing everything they go through is, uh, is pretty nice. So, so what's the what's the vision here, man? What's the... Yeah, What's the asked. goal? <laughs> yeah, in, 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 a, in a perfect in a, in a perfect world, would you want to uh, expand uh, to more locations? Yeah, and, and we'll get into that. And my theory is that instead of paying for a lease, unless you don't have shitty lease, before going to that second, you, actually, you want to talk about the real estate aspect? Huh? No, 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 no. If I want to do that, I would totally be plugging myself the entire time. But I say it because. Hey, man. What's your biggest cost? Right now? It's that. No, my biggest cost for a long time has been uh, employees and manpower, which is usually the case. Oh, that's usually your biggest California cost. California experience. Yeah. I've dabbled a lot with different employment arrangements. I pay workers comp. I do it all by the books, and it. California expensive. pretty much yeah makes makes it nearly impossible to be a small business. I saw on a map that Texas Texas was the most friendly, and California is, is like the least friendly for businesses to employ people. Yeah, good to know. Good to know. So, I mean, uh, I highly consider relocating to Reno. Talk about a real estate market. So I Tesla went about. there because as soon as you cross over in Nevada, the laws completely change, right? With that and there's also a lot of immigration from the Bay Area out there. There's a lot of people because they yeah. just opened up a lot of new tech offices, and then Tesla is opening up their Giga battery factory out there. Um, which it's mainly is their server farms and all that. Where they oh, solar the solar batteries, oh, yeah, yeah, batteries. which is all lithium. solar power. It is. Now, people really have argued about batteries. that. Is the lithium has got to come from somewhere? Too. It seems dirty, right? Is that is the it, problem? I think so. I understand. Yeah, I, 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 I never looked into fine. it. No, actually, okay. lithium's not dirty. Neodymium. That, that, that's the oil argument. The oil people are like, oh, we're so bad because we're taking oil. Do you know where lithium comes from? I never looked into it. I really care. But, uh, is it because they're, they're mining? Is it? Well, but if they're doing it in Nevada, it's not like it's a diamond mine where they're killing kids with no arms and stuff like that, right? You take I'm sure it's only the only problem is burning that oil. They're not burning. Right, that's the issue. True, true, true. Which is well, and battery right. technology is constantly evolving. Hopefully, we're going to have other methods of fueling batteries. So maybe lithium will become as dependent on them in the future. I don't know you know much about battery technology, but right, there's right. always that's a you know, huge area of investment. This is why I like to go off on tangents and talk about <laughs> others. By burning, you mean obviously expanding. I heard cow farts are, are way more like right. Did you see that documentary too? What the Worse for the environment. Yeah, or cowspiracy. Uh, yeah, I think it was cowspiracy. Either way, yeah, I have. The, the cow farms, not only the crafts, but they're farting actually. Right? It's a huge carbon footprint. Yeah. Right. Huge, massive. And not to mention, it's just it incredibly unsustainable. It's three right? molecules versus one um, of, like, say, gas or anything else or anything like that. And how cool, I mean, we're not going to go kill They release cows. methane? Yes. yes. Which is they more they greenhouse, is worse greenhouse gas than even CO2. And I believe carbon monoxide. Right. And oil is so bad, but it's it's more, more than, uh, down there. So, but also I have oh yeah. So I remember those, those fishes that uh, that eat crap on the. Uh, is that something that could be used? You think yeah. in my pool, like so again, those but, little. But the idea is using natural biological process to help clean your aquarium. So because okay, everyone wants to know what's the algae eaters, right? We're going to clean up my tank. What I want to let people know is that they're part of good, you know, keeping the aquarium healthy and in check, but they're not going to do all the work for you. What, what am I talking about? What, what are they even called? They are. So, uh, again, let's get nerdy. I want to get nerdy on this. Okay. This so, point. Uh, there's quite a few actually. So you can look at it this way within the freshwater world. There's a few different, uh, cleanup crew. A lot of times these animals are, are colloquially referred to as cleanup crew because they're cleaning up waste. Either they're cleaning up food that hasn't been eaten and would otherwise rot in waste, or they're eating allergies that people would, would want in their aquarium. Some of them are also eating pests like snails that can sometimes become overpopulated in an aquarium. So there's various, you know, you choose the species depending on what you're trying to you know, maintain. Right, and that's one other thing. How do you make sure they don't eat each other? Or is that cool? Selection. I mean, proper yeah, selection. Because you're going to have to animals. understand it so that... Right? One's not a predator to the other one. And then right. the he, little Jill is like, one ate the other one and she's traumatized. Which yeah. happens too often just because of ignorance. And, right. And going into a pet store, not a place where people actually understand something like this. Right. And I could take ages to Google it or I can just come to a place like this where people understand. That it, or right? trial and error, which unfortunately harms fish and makes little girls and boys cry when fish die. Right. But uh, it comes down to compatibility and knowing what's compatible. And like you said, though, relying on a, a reputable store that you trust to give you guidance too and right. stay on the right path. 
But anyways, you know, the cleanup crew, mm-hmm. can, it, can it be fish? It can be uh, snails. It can be shrimp. It can be other life forms, again, like plants and algae. You know, it's called plants cleanup crew because really they're helping. Um, but the cleanup crew can take many forms. So, so, uh, let's assume nobody knows anything here. I know it's a complicated subject. How, how, do, how do plants help when they kind of shed and give off? It actually keeps things clean or keeps the balance? So actually, no, to grow, uh, plants need you know, building blocks, right? To build their cells and grow more leaves and grow more biomass. Mm-hmm. And so, um, how do plants get that? Well, plants need a few things. They need CO2, you know, the stuff we breathe out. Right, that's know. exactly what I thought of. So outside the water, you know, trees should give us oxygen. They right? do. Breathe out. Same but underwater, what happens? Same idea, actually. They're okay. giving oxygen. But they're giving oxygen to the water. To the water. So more plants, more oxygenation in the water. Absolutely, which things have your fish. And, and actually, more pristine aquarium. Higher oxygen content is just going to make the aquarium cleaner. Um, how do they do so that? You want more plants. You want more plants. It's never going to hurt. Never going to hurt, and it just adds beauty. And what you do is your aquarium changes over time. You don't have an aquarium that then stays stale and stays that way for years. It's changing and growing. It's dynamic. Are there any it's plants generous. that could hurt water, the water in your aquarium in a negative way? Or does that have to depend on the type of fish? No, it really couldn't. It couldn't work that way. You know, plants are only going to go only do help. positive. Yeah, they can only really do positive unless, of course, they're dying, and then they're contributing to waste. But that's your your fault, not the plants. Um, anyways, uh, plants, you know, they absorb nutrients. And so one of the main ways they clean is that if there's no plants, the thing is all that poo, all that pee from the uh, fish, all that food you put in that doesn't get eaten. I thought about that too. It rots. It creates what Fish is poo. That's another oh, waste. Yeah. That, that's gonna, yeah. And oh, really? they pee, and then also they have mucus coatings that they shed. There's all sorts, you know, just like we have skin that we right. shed. I didn't live in that. Yeah. Eat that. Right. right, so water quality is really important. It's, here's a, a common saying in the aquarium industry is that you know, we're not keeping fish, we're keeping water. And like, it's just a testament to how important that is. Yeah, to make you understand that it's, that it's the environment. Usually it really the problem is. comes back to water. It absolutely does. Wow. And a lot of diseases are usually secondary to and, environmental and health. And, uh, yeah, and then when we have these water issues on chlorination where the city's actually putting in more stuff into the water, right? Like I heard in, in Texas, right. yes, yes, yes fluoride, that's, that's right. what it was. Because Texas, things corrode and all of our subway equipment like a lot quicker than California. A lot here in Hawaii's got like the best water, water because of all the protection lights. Right? So that would probably make a guy like you, depending on where he's at, his life. Basically, the guy in Texas with his shop, his life is way well, you know, no, so you're saying it is important for aquarium keepers because depending on where you live, your source water can widely vary. Some of it's well, mm-hmm. which doesn't have, you know, it's not municipal water. But like here in San Jose, we got our water getting treated in plants. There was disinfectants like chlorine and chloramines, which mm-hmm. is more popular. Mm-hmm. And then there's ways too, though, that we don't, we're not even very aware of pharmaceuticals, antibiotics. Things are in our waterways now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, although they're in acceptable levels, according to some, you know, regulatory body, right. Is there any acceptable level of, of right. toxins? You know, most people would think no. Just so, give us uh, <laughs> perspective. No, no, I'm serious to, to me because it's not just about us, right? You chlorinate it so we can drink it, but what about everybody else? Right? I mean, chlor- the chlorine is good, but, you know, there's other question, questions about what else is going to the water. So but how do you, let's say you're, you're in Texas, as long as you have a filtration system in your house, then problem solved, right? Because this water is feeding in to this. Right, right, so we use a lot of water filters. The back is using a filtration system. And the formats can vary. And again, like, there can be so much variation in how an aquarium is set up and how to have a successful aquarium. Yeah. This particular aquarium, you know, just quickly, it employs a sump tank. So actually, the filter isn't in the back. It's down below. Uh, but the filter in the back is another format that is popular. It's, it's usually cheaper, more simple. Uh, yeah, so you can get a look at it. Unfortunately, the light's not on, so you can't see. No, that's all right. But it's a basic filtration uh, system uh, underneath, and that is what's keeping the pumps going, keeping things it, it's, moving, you know, right? You think of it like as the heart of the aquarium. Um, this sort of compartment allows you to sort of then put in your own filters and, and make this aquarium sort of adapted to whatever you want. Because, again, every aquarium is different. Someone might use this tank and set up for a reef tank, Others might use it for a freshwater aquarium, and depending on that, you know, you're going to adapt what's down there, and you're going to adapt a lot of the other equipment. 
too. So snap. So this is coral. Not actually a line. Yeah, and this tank is coral. Or you can there. actually see them. So they're reaching out, and again, they're grabbing stuff and eating, which is just going to be environment. So they're essentially plankton. You know, just like the ocean, there's plankton that floats, which is you know zooplankton and phytoplankton. Well, and they eat it. And this dude, he's like, oh yeah, you gotta get close. You know, he's this plastic uh, <laughs> fish and the anemone. So get this dude. He's just chilling inside. He, he's basically in his hammock right now. He's like in his bed. This uh, this clownfish and anemone are 15 years old. Wow. 15 years old in captivity, and they're still going strong. But when you add this other aspect to the aquarium, you can get something that is just you know breathtaking. And people don't realize you can have a museum quality aquarium in your home. Right. And be appreciated every day and be awed every day, you know, as you see it mature and grow beyond you know, before your eyes. Right. So it's really impressive, and it's never been easier to keep an aquarium. Uh, a lot I'm of being fascinated uh, with abalone uh, shells as a kid. And can we eat abalone, or is abalone something moderate? It's, it's okay. um, I, I don't know about the you know, sustainability of eating abalone. I can't okay. say I eat a lot of shellfish myself. I don't know about the other side of it. But what's uh, cool about can you have them in a thing like this? Or are they... You know, not typically. Not typically. Um, but like oysters and clams and stuff. Yeah, they're filter yeah. feeders. They, eat those. they don't really want them in there. Well, they eat them, and also their shell is of ornamental value. Love, people love the shell. Mm -hmm. It's a decorative element. That's what, that's what it was. It has Isn't that, there pearls? It's, it? well, no, but it, the whole shell is covered in a pearly like sort of covering, often opalescent uh, coating. Right. Yeah, it makes it really lustrous and beautiful. Where do pearls come from? Pearls are inside something. Yeah, pearls come in clowns usually, and my understanding is, you know, it starts with a grain that then uh, over time builds, and I can, I, I'm not sure exactly the process behind it, but uh, it's a natural, biologically made sort of thing. Sick and clowns. Sick. Uh, back to the question about vision. Uh, dude, if you we weren't here, you'd be going off like a rocket too. Yeah. These cameras were here. You throw us in the mix and like... Uh, it's all good. We're gonna throw this on, on YouTube later and we'll share. Editor, right? And uh, yeah, as long as it's uh, um, uh, it's cool. Kyle, so Kyle just joined up. Let's eat it. It's just not. It's obviously cool to have somebody you can uh, trust because employees. I mean, you want to give everybody opportunity, but even in the the minimum wage world, it's just it's very difficult. I mean, Where can we get started on that? I mean. Uh, well, you know, we don't have a wage. I'll tell you that we've dabbled with like, you know, various wages. That well, you can't. Well, the wages are are in the minimum is, is tough for you to begin with, but you can't do that because you got to compete. You want to be a little higher, be that, sustainable. There's that. Um, but it just comes down to trust, right? At the end of the day, when you're a small business owner, nobody can literally do it better than you because how can you get your employees to actually give a shit about your business and want them to grow and not be um, no, there's a way. It's, it's hard to find. Yes, there's absolutely. You're right. You're absolutely and, right. And wage is not it. In my, in my opinion, I think incentivizing uh, is way better than actually just pumping somebody up and giving them a three, four dollar raise. It's been proven that that actually makes them lazy. Uh, believe it or not, a few case studies. But what do I mean by incentives? Right? If they sell X amount of thing, they get X. There's commission and things like that. You know, what's popular with startups is giving them a piece of the company. So, you know, there's an employee yes. equity pool, and we, we're dabbling with that, but here's the problem. I think back to the yogurt guy. Did you, did you ever see that thing? What's his... Uh, oh, yeah, Chobani. Yes. He does do that, and a lot of really successful really? companies. You don't understand. It's give. the thank you economy, dude. I'm telling you, don't get me started. It's a uh, really, I think, good idea, and it's something we'd like to incorporate in some capacity. Is They're here. invested in the company. What they put in is literally what they're going to get out. Right? Everyone wants that. Yes. Everyone wants their return to be equivalent to the input. Is that, was, that greater, you know? was that something you were, you were offering before? You were, you were um, so here's the thing, you know, to do it right. So there might, be good, there might be good people out there listening. Never this is good for any business. Right. Um, it's challenging as a startup to do that on a budget because here's the thing, to really make a watertight sort of agreement that it's going to be legally sound and it's going to be well thought out and you're not going to screw yourself over as a business owner and screw people over to as employees, mm -hmm. is you need to have a legal assistance to develop these plans. Cool to your client as a CPA and eventually he's going to be a right hand man. Uh, if, you're not not lawyer. if you're not happy with the one you got, yeah, so that, no, the two best friends, all mentors have always told me, should always be your CPA and your lawyer. The closer you can keep them, the less you have to pay them, right? And you want to keep a good relationship. I, see. I think that goes for any business, and that's uncle of mine. You know, he went from one liquor store to a whole bunch of gas stations, but he was a CPA as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but he always told me that, and I think it's it's great advice because we wait till we have a problem to actually 
go to them, right? Uh, I, had our, I had our family on the show, right? You, you'll, you'll see him as well. He kind of did our estate plan. I'm going to have my, my CPA on here next. Why? Because people don't want to pay him, but in the long run, it actually saves you a lot of money, right? What we don't That's know their is what we don't know. That's not what, uh, I used to think like that. No, but it's true. I get the value of high quality <laughs> services. Think about how many times Donald Trump has gone into bank. There's a literally a method to the madness, whether it's fair or not, it's one thing, but the more you know about a subject, right, the more you can do whatever you need to do for your benefit legally. You're not doing anything wrong, right? Um, well, it's true. Here's the other benefit to you, is if you hire a professional, it's on them to make sure they don't have up, and you know, they have yes. insurance policy and stuff, so you're sort of hedging risk true, by doing true, that. True, But it's not cheap, you know? And you're humble enough to say that I don't know uh, everything. Uh, the tax laws are always going to change. There's something, as much as I don't want to give up my money, if I'm going to give it anywhere, those are the two guys that you are also thinking. sitting there doing TurboTax, thinking everything's going to go cool, and you end up, what ends up happening, you end up paying way more money than uh, you were supposed to. Then at that point, you're going to wish you got a CPA. And this is the argument I was at my parents, and until we finally got a sound one, I can't tell you the amount of things we were able to write off that we weren't writing off that we didn't know about. Right. And, that, and that's what I was talking about is, hey, if you're driving everywhere, um, you're using the car for Right? Oh, trust me, we're expensive. Uh, remember that annoying well, so here's, here's what I was going to say. <laughs> you know, having these advisors is great, but here's the truth. Like, educate yourself as much about your own bookkeeping. Educate yourself as much about the lock so you can call bullshit, so you can yes, know no what services no to forego and which ones are essential. You know, don't put it all in, in, in faith Well, in you don't know what's happening, yeah. You've know, you got to be savvy about all those things, and it takes a lot of learning. Right. You know, tell stuff. me the... Uh, details. So at the end of the day, from a business perspective, I just showed a cat. You're, go, you're going. Uh, uh, let, 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 let's be real. You're going on uh, margin. Is that really a baby? I think it was a child because we have a music oh. school right here, and I see kids getting out. And okay. Like, yeah. So at the end of the, the business ask, there's no secret. You're going on margin. You try your best to get wholesale parts to get them done for your client. You're paying your client for labor as well, and you're making. Um, a cut. There, there's no need to be like shy about this. I'm not going to give you any way. Your accountant's thinking the same thing as far as your client, but the quality, your value comes from, comes from the quality. It comes from the time and energy saved, right? From doing something All of the like above. This. You yeah. know, we're trying to offer a modern business and now in a world of Amazon, people expect a lot of conveniences right. and we're trying our best to approach that. Right. But again, offer domain expertise and support when it comes to this and, and something that Amazon can't. And, you know, we think it's a really strong point, but Amazon can't entirely replace a really good credit store. Yep. There's no way you can replace a showroom. I thought about that this morning, and, too. And I, thought, I thought that was e-commerce, what I meant, would be your enemy, but it's, it's in no way because it's a specific niche, right? I can get all stuff from Amazon. Well, we're getting into e-commerce, too. I, I, I don't know how to put it together. I can sit there and YouTube how to put it together, mm -hmm. uh, but all that time and energy spent learning about how the hell to do it in trial and fair, you know, wasting money. It's one of those things just like the CPA that you got to be like, okay, it's better for me to just do, if I'm going to do this. Do it, Pay right? the professional, yes. learn right the first time, and eventually, you know, it's a, what's the saying? A, a pound, penny wise is a pound foolish or something. You know, you pay up front and, and you get your money worth. Right. And you save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of money on having to rebuy equipment or you know, make up for loss. I think the key here is maintenance. And what it is is preventative maintenance, right? I think it's that, true. I think back to the, 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 the subway world. We waste our soda machine breaks down, but we don't want to actually have a preventative maintenance schedule, right? Because it costs money. Yes, but what's our biggest cost when we don't do it in general? When I look at our PL, it's our equipment. It's our, our bread. Yeah, again. our bread shit breaking down, or this breaking down. But just like our car, it's like we don't change the oil, don't change the oil, and basically when it goes, the whole engine's gone, and then we go shit. Well, this sucks, right? If we would have done preventive maintenance, which is normal, right? another, another, I love my parents, another argument I had. To always have to have with them to set up will actually save. I mean, yeah. common sense, you know, and this is like applies to owning a vehicle, but so many people, you know, aren't very familiar with how important it is to do that routine maintenance. My other question. What is the most common screw up and most common mistake that you see right when you show up? So many. That's, that's so many, man. It's hard to start, but lay them out, man. One, okay. one of them is, you know, stocking your car too rush. quickly. Yeah, we gotta have a beer after this. We should have a beer right now. It's yeah. right now. We have, we usually have them stocked. Okay. But take your time. You can even take a break and there's a brew, uh, 
We're not taking any goddamn not breaks. Not we're, not we're not stopping. Look at this mission. Does this, does this feel like 45 minutes? It's been 45 minutes. Can you believe that? You're shooting your shit. You know, time flies. Exactly. Exactly. That's no, awesome. No, no, no uh, most common uh, mistakes that you walk into. Again, it's not about us, but to give here's more value to them. them. People don't realize the importance of, of having bacteria in the aquarium and making sure that tap water and the chlorine tap water doesn't get into the aquarium. That's a huge, you know, faux pas. Uh, people often think here, here's another huge mistake is people think that cleaning aquarium means taking out all the fish, literally draining it down and taking it to the sink and rinsing it out. That's my cousins would do. Like, all yeah. wrong. So all you wrong. want bacteria. And I learned about you that. We both went through our acne phases, right? And I learned there's, there's well, good yeah. bacteria, there's bad bacteria. And we actually need the good bacteria, which is why they started to ban the anti uh the anti, I felt like, yeah, that was uh, horrible. So when you see something that is, oh, it's 100% antibacterial and you're actually putting it on your uh, face, that eventually those are going to be gone because what it's doing is it's really helping. Creating uh, resistance. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. creating resistance, exactly. And they know that, right? Why are they putting it on? Because we're frustrated as hell and we just keep coming back, keep coming. I went through this, Mo went through this, you went through this, right? Uh, well, we all did, you know, like a freaking... <laughs> Acne, but no, I think it's important to know how that all relates well, back to this world. You know, it's, it's, it's really important. The bacterial world, we're only beginning to understand its importance, you know, but also gut bacteria yes. is another thing that's really becoming more, people are more aware of the importance of balanced gut flora. Right. And, you know, guess what? You know, we use bacteria to actually filter our water in municipal water. That literally, it's not like big filters and machines. We're literally just creating sludge pools of bacteria and they're really cleaning the water. So bacteria play a really important role. A lot of I'm telling you, I'm a nerd now, man. Don't get me started on that. I did all my research of alkaline versus acid. And I feel like, forget all the doxycycline in a second. This is the shit that we just basically need to make our stomach, our gut bacteria, and change them. And we need to like go for like a week, right? Of kale, everything alkaline. I'm not even pressed right now. But, uh, to actually change that instead of taking as many pills as possible, right? Well, any natural well, what are we changing? Is we're changing the pH chemistry in our Body. You know, you're doing, you're exactly, what you're doing is you're trying to tweak your gut, which is really, in a sense, what we're trying to do with our programs, too. Unfortunately, a lot of things, uh, like eating food, creates acids and things like that. Same thing in the aquarium. 90% of the know, things you can make, you name off top, they're acidic. Like, you know, alkaline, very few things like spinach, you know, those things are, are, are alkaline. And, mm -hmm. uh, David Avocado Wolf, man, a YouTube video of his, of uh, just doing a blast for five days. And it what? Like, just a glass of kale, of cucumber, of everything you can look up that's considered alkaline. Mm -hmm. And it changed things for me completely, right? We need a little bit of acidity still, right? Like so you drink smoothies and stuff? Yeah, I, I did that, and it really uh, helped me out. I went through a phase, like, way later, out of nowhere. I'm just pepperoni face out of nowhere. Like, it was bad. But really, I just need to lose about 20 damn pounds, and I was so acidic. But it's so hard to reverse all the damage of all the shit we made. All the things we've done, and I'm sitting there well, taking pre workouts. Of I like, think a lot of people are slow, my liver's tapped. Yeah. It's like, you know, society is, is a, I think, a reason you know, like, it's kind of coming from your girlfriend, but like, everything we do is a city. It's genius, you know, what the meat company, what the meat industry has done, and meat is one of the largest uh, causes of like acidic mm -hmm. stomachs, mm -hmm. conditions, stuff, at least right. from what some people say. Yep. But uh, the meat, and then some would argue. Bread because we're kind of becoming more gluten sensitive, all of us, right? With uh, the chemicals that are in bread, but I'm sure. But if it's grass well, milk, allergies grass in general. Milk, I would pay literally go to Whole Foods when I, I was in the best shape to pay for that expensive ass grass fed steak, but I felt amazing. No, but we can't, can't afford that shit. Well, you're saying meat. Look at Sorry. You, you budget for what's important for you, and if that's what's important for you, which it should be, you know, you should pay a budget somewhere. there. Do our most expensive shit should be the stuff we put in. My body, you know? Why are you? Yes, but freaking Whole Foods, man. Shit, we gotta open up like a, in between the trade of jail. Uh, hopefully that'll come. Oh. There's some talks of that on A1 and San Felipe. You know, Save Mart went out, right? Oh. With the Taco Bell and McDonald's is. So Trader Joe's has been trying to talk to, to get in there. But well, what, what do you have against me? Why are you saying that you felt meat was the most acidic? Because it's crappy meat. Um, well, I, you know, I've watched a few documentaries lately, which are cool, probably making me around on Netflix or went off. But, yeah. Um, even before I saw that. And you hit big bags and stuff. Uh, all I did was, uh, for like three years, I just watched documentaries on Netflix in my office, and I was fascinated. Not that Ken does that. Uh, talking about me here. 
yes. Okay, cool. Back to that. Melissa, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues with the meat industry, I think. And, you know, we already talked about the, the actual carbon footprint, which is significant. But, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, They're being jobbed with steroids, there's, too. Basically, there's chickens to, to yield better. Oh, my God. Antibiotics. I saw a video on uh, prawns that made me sick. And they were coming through, the prawns, and they were taking this thing, and they were shrimp. basically shrimp. The shrimp. Yep. And they're injecting them with something to make them plump up. Yeah. And then what's going to happen is they're going to yield per pound uh, more money. Right? Less shrimp per pound. Yes. Yeah, more money for them. Yeah, more money for them. Uh, and this is somewhere in Asia, which who knows probably reaches uh, us. But what is that going to do? That's right. That's the shit that you really come down with. You, you have some concerns <laughs> on the mercury. You're, you, you posted something. No, I'm mice. more concerned about uh, radiation. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. I thought so, about radiation. So I remember you hated about being aware of it. Right, right. Well, what is it about that brain doesn't know? Um, the gist of it is that you know Fukushima was a major nuclear disaster that leaked into the Pacific Ocean, and it's going to flow to Hawaii, flow to Cali. It has already. Yeah. It has already. But here's the here's a bigger issue. I've I've really advocated for thinking about. Thinking twice about eating uh, sushi, especially when it comes to tuna, and it gets it gets ugly because my understanding is that a lot of tuna that is eaten here in California, in particular, but a lot of the United States tuna is actually imported from Japan. It's one of our number one sandwich sales so, so is tuna, and I don't know where though that's where tuna comes from, but the yeah. tuna for like sushi, right, right. often just comes raw from Japan. too. It's yeah. raw, you know. It's I think different, but um. These, we got levels of mercury. Well, sure, all, all the fish had for a long time, but the reactivity yeah. to me is even more concerning. There's no, there's no like FDA like type thing that regulates that. Is there? Not, not in America. Well, unfortunately, the European you can't even Union trusts the regulatory body of the government to like. Honestly, I, I frankly do believe that there's a lot of corruption and that people turn blind eye based on lobbying or whatever, and that yes. that um, you know they don't have our best interests, unfortunately. Um, nonetheless, not to go down that rabbit hole. That's my theory, is the European Union, right? Like the Ritz cracker in Spain versus here are two completely different uh, ingredients. I went to Barcelona, and, and on majority, everyone's not obese. And I'm trying to figure out why. And I really think it's the laws of the food because yeah, they're, more yeah, they're not. Exactly. Right? So then I fly back into Chicago, and then everybody's a whale again. And I remember talking to Nate about that. I'm like, what do you think this is, dude? I think it's the laws in the food and the quality of the food and why it's so bad here. And Brexit, that's probably why UK wanted to bounce because it is a huge benefit, right? Getting out of the European Union and food and all that stuff if they're pressing upon them. Um, that, that's just my theory. I'm not what, 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 what politics. What, no, no, but why do you think, in general, you go to Barcelona, you go to other places, yeah, there's going to be some fat people here and there, this and that, but in general, on average, people are a lot. It's a different lifestyle. I think it's a right. different, you can speak to different societal through. norms. Like, you don't, there's no drive throughs That's what there's no freaking and like when you Burger go, Kings everywhere. When you it's order something at a restaurant, it doesn't come with five sides and a starter and a dessert and a portions. Coke. Portions, yeah. Portions are small. You just it's bread. just going to be bruschetta and some. You walk everywhere. You take public transportation. That's you true. don't just wake up and sit in your car. You're not in a car for four hours. Sit in your car and then sit on your couch and then go to sleep. Right. That's so true. That's two good points. And I, I bet it's a combination of all of those. Yeah. Uh, on top of the laws and um, dirty ass and meat, but um, filler. But this is what I love. I wanted you guys to get to know. Kent, he's awesome. Dude, I never give him enough credit, but he's actually super smart, super knowledgeable. <laughs> was always the biggest nerd in all these AP classes. Uh, and uh, I wanted you guys to get to know uh, his business. You guys are on Willow Street. I checked in. I tagged that uh, as well. But um, I, I take pride in supporting uh, small business. I mean, I got a lot of respect for what it, my man uh, does. So if you are ever into this, or you know, I know I got a lot of custom builders too. Um, you want somebody who's knowledgeable because the, you have to incorporate the whole architect aspects with are like, hey, here's my plans. How, how can you do things? You have to have knowledge of okay, well, where's the water source coming from? You really do have to have. Uh, you got to. If anything, that's probably the only thing you want to have to refresh your game on, right? Well, you know, it's a whole new world. When you start to get into more custom installations, you're working with contractors, you're working with the architects, and a lot of times they're commissioning you to come in. And uh, with some recent interesting proposals we've had, Intel approached us about installing two large aquariums. 
They have an in-house person who's in charge of this, and they had architecture drawings. So we've had to, you know, up our game to be able to hang with those sort of guys, and and uh, it's something that we're still getting more experience with. Sure. But um, it, you know, it, it is absolutely right. You got to understand the plumbing, electrical supply to the aquarium, and you know, again, they're really heavy. So there's some serious considerations that go into executing, pulling off a long-term, you know, quality aquarium. Well, they're catering to you for a reason. Man. You know your shit, and you're passionate about it, right? Where else are they going to go? They're going to walk into a a pet store and they're gonna have a lizard in one tank and yeah. like yeah well you know, build it but when it's something like Intel they want it done right they want something they're gonna be proud of and then the maintenance yeah. right? and they want the maintenance you know they want something custom they want something big you know and not just any shop down the street even as an aquarium specialty shop can deliver all those sort of things mm-hmm. you know we have capabilities and facilities that go beyond your normal store and yeah, that is one of the things how especially how are you going to train these because it's just so if a guy just comes off the streets and doesn't know anything, there's just so much from the look. Yeah, he's got a he's unless he's got a specific interest or appreciation for these things. Or right? For all experience. you have any idea how many Indian bio majors are watching this right now? Uh, right? Which uh, so who knows? Maybe Thank they, they want an internship or somebody. You know, wants to come I tell in. people aquariums are an amazing way to get in touch with not only nature but science. And like I'm not kidding. Even if you're a medicine, I think or something, that's what got you into this. I things will start to click it. more yes. for you as a, as a physician or as a biologist, whatever, you know, to keeping your own aquarium. It's a very rewarding thing. You have you get to exercise creative, you know, skills and creative uh, aspects, you know, to your personality, but also you get to learn about the science and the nature of your life, which for a lot of people is very rewarding. Inside of our body is basically like um, fish tank. Like, what you start to understand, water? understand pH better. You start yes. to understand bacteria, and that applies to you. That applies to life. You know, it really is practical, actual knowledge. Right. You know, and a lot of it applies to gardens as well. And, and keeping plants is very similar principles, which is another thing we were dabbling with and getting into indoor plants. You know, if you need to do any staging for your you know, real estate sales, we yeah. offer plants, turnkey design solutions. Yes. Um, we're working with other real estate agents to do that. But in the soil, there's a chemistry. There's something absolutely going on there. There's a bacterial component. There's you damn snails getting on my spinach, and I can't figure out. And then my gardener just walks up, and he goes, "There's snails." And but guess what? the pesticide they had was for everything except for snails. For snails, and they just ate up all my spinach. Which I was they didn't have any competitors. Uh, yes, they don't have any. And they just they just come through the damn night. And now all of a sudden, there's like this whole farm of snails after that. But obviously, then we got that powder and the oh, Gone, but um, the key is you stick your finger in there, and there's a whole other universe of things going on in the soil, right? It out. is, there is, and like I said, it is a uh, lot beyond what you see. You got your feed your plants, you got to water your plants regularly. And here's the thing you know, to every plant is a unique, you know, right. specimen and species, and they need different water, they need different amount of light. You really got to investigate what you're keeping, the specific plants you're keeping. So, there's a lot of again, learning involved with keeping aquariums and keeping plants. And, uh, so because that you're curious, curious, it's your, awesome. Your fresh water or your salt water. And that will let you know according to whatever species, right? Can we It's either fresh water or salt water. Right? True. Yeah. Those are, yeah. well, that, there's also another style called brackish. It's, it's, it's a mix of both? It's a mix of both, sort of. But the more popular is either your all salt or your all fresh water. So if somebody wants a fish, that's salt water. And then you want another fish, it's fresh water. That's the answer. You can't have so that. Right. Easy. And the clients yeah. will be like, well, no. We're going to have some guy come to you go, What's the most expensive fish you, you've got? What, what is the most expensive yeah. fish on top of your head? There's a, there's a oh. I mean, we sold scarcity fish. is what it is. How scarce they are are probably the most. Expensive. Yeah, and also are they new to the hobby? Because there's some fish that are it's a brand new species, so inherently it's rare. Mm. Um, and the other thing that really influences these costs is how hard is it to catch and collect? Some of the species we see coming out are like deep sea, so you got it's just more involved to to collect these animals. But dude. There's fish selling for tens of thousands of dollars. But, you know, for your more, uh, like, very exotic angel fish, very exotic tings, aberrant, you know, species that have, like, very unusual colors and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, like, for me, you know, you know, more conservative stuff, I sell, you know, specimens that are 200 bucks, 250 bucks easily. You know, up to 500 bucks even in, in a, you know, you run the mill crime store. The and fish the most cost. common would be... Goldfish, goldfish, you know, guppies at, at two ninety nine a pop. You know, you know, some places even cheaper. You know, uh, but it can be very cheap. This is the fish stock market. We're talking about. It's, it's an amazing world. Oh well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's so much. That's it's exactly what I. You know, I wasn't being sarcastic. That's what I'm nerded up in. Uh, 
that sounds crazy, but there's honestly people watching out there that might really give a shit about it. Nobody likes this. And, and that's going to be their world. And they're going to be walking in here, just dropping knowledge on you. And you can appreciate it. Right? When somebody um, likes something that you like. Is that a Scorpion fish painting right back there? That's a, a psychedelic mandarin first, actually. Not a Scorpion fish, but a very cool fish. Oh, yeah. Second, believe it or not, that's like is it because it changes, color. changes colors? Constantly. It doesn't change colors, but it just has a wild color and pattern. And actually, mm -hmm. I have one in here, usually hiding though, but I don't think you can see it. Nonetheless, it's called a dragonette. Oh, here it is. Look at it. Check it out. That's one version of it. Yeah, really. Get the camera right there. <laughs> oh, I'll show that. There he is. See him right there? He's got some pretty wild stripes and colors. Yeah, we'll try to get the so I can do that. And what's What's his significance? He just bounced on us. Went right back in to, to watch Netflix. It's really hard to see that. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's the dragon's significance? It's just the significance that he's a beautiful specimen that I get to watch before my eyes and live his life. And I, I mean, he, he doesn't have the role other than to be beautiful and add to the biodiversity of my apartment. Yeah. So, the biggest thing that dictates price is scarcity, pretty much, how hard it is to get. Like says, yeah, and other, some rule of thumb, salt water is generally more expensive. Are some endangered? They're, they're, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of that, because they're endangered, you're not allowed to keep them as well. Mm, yes, so, you know, we do our best to source our fish from certified collectors who are paying attention to, you know, what is illegal and not Because that's changing. Pardon? Does that change all the time? It can change, change, yeah, and, it yeah. does change. And actually, one uh, popular topic is interesting and it impacts us aquarium people in the industry is that they want to put several species of coral on an endangered risk that aren't currently and if that happens it would actually make it illegal to sell these coral despite the fact that actually even if they were grown in captivity even if we didn't collect them in the wild it's just a, a blanket rule that applies and with acupora coral are very popular in our hobby and it would be a huge where was doing it is Obviously, it's a lack of knowledge. A lack of it really is. Part. You know what? Guess what? <laughs> you Unfortunately, guys, you guys got to talk about it. You know me. I don't shut up. When something like that happens, somebody's going to step up. And let's let's, let's talk about this. Who's, who's the body that does it? Well, um, CITES issues the endangered species, you know, ACTS, C I T E S. Um, but who knows what lobbyist group and, and who's funding them that's going after? They're using aquarium industry as a scapegoat. You know, really, it's it's the it's the dredgers, it's it's all sorts of other industries that are causing problems to the ocean, but they've scapegoated the aquarium industry as as causing problems. And really, it's so much the opposite. It's so much the opposite. But nonetheless, you know, we're being unfairly targeted often. You know, there's slanderous uh, articles out there about about things in related to the aquarium industry, and they're really they're often just complete. They're ignoring purposefully the data to. Spin their case, you know, to, to say whatever it is they're trying to say. What do you think the method when it comes to coral? What do you think there's got to be a reason, right? By putting a blanket on all coral, you know, that could possibly benefit. Well, first of all, why, why do you not like it because you ban certain types of coral? This is actually helping your environment when you get this type of coral in your aquarium. And by yeah. being not you know, allowed to have it, then it's not. It's a popular species. It's a popular species that's commonly uh, tr uh, grown and traded in the hobby. Mm -hmm. Um, it would just be a huge hole in, in the diversity that we can keep, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. No, keep going. That was just Instagram. Um, nonetheless, uh, it would be a huge impact because it's a really popular uh, part of the segment. And it would just set the precedence, too, for more of this to happen, which is really good. What level of science the are they? What level are they the highest? Is there like national level? Or, what was the acronym again? CITES. Okay. At least CITES is the organization I, you know, I'm not too actually sure what that stands for, but... Right. But they're in charge of deciding, making the laws. Like the baby turtles I told you about. We found out later we had to get them out of the house because they were legal. That's probably you know, like animal control maybe or something. Fish and wildlife. Uh -huh. right. Well, they didn't find it, but we just... Death mom figured out, hey, it's going to get us sick, right? It's going to get attention. That's a great idea. So I'm sure there's, there's another body for aquariums. Well, um... You know, just for wild animals, there's a, there's an organizing body that oversees that, makes sure that you know, the legal things aren't being imported and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, everything that's imported, aquarium-wise, especially saltwater stuff, is carefully scrutinized by uh, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, I believe. Um, but that's they're not the same organization that declares this is an endangered species, and that's a whole other organization. Well, there's harm to bringing 
let's say worst case scenario, there's harm to bringing in something here that could potentially affect this area. Is there for fish? Because yeah. you know, yes, you don't yes. want to bring in meat and whatever, right? When you're it's already happened. Or, it's already happened. Okay. For example, there's some. What is the harm? Then? They become invasive if so. If these animals somehow are released into the wild, mm-hmm. they can become invasive, and it's already happened. Like there's lost. What, what does that mean? Invasive. Invasive yeah. meaning that doesn't know including them. <laughs> meaning that the, the there's indigenous populations and species that live in a certain habitat, right? And when you introduce a foreign species, they can go and wipe it out. And this is actually happening with lionfish in the wild. Some guy, sometime, one day, somebody released the lionfish to the wild, and now they're become almost extinct. They're killing almost all the reef fish because they eat them all, and they're just breeding like rabbits. I didn't think of they're lionfish just I'm investing. I'm in one of the famous rabbits, right? I don't think they're invasive. No, but if, let's say is it possible you can bring in one or two fishes and they're literally making a little shape and then die off? Is that not realistic? Um, that would happen. The mechanism would be like this: is that the the, the fish would come in and eat the, the natural food source of the otter, true. which would then indirectly hurt and harm the otters, right? Not so much that we get sick or something, but it has those chain of reaction effects, you know, downstream for all sorts of animals. Right. And there's another one that's popular and commonly known is that people release their goldfish. It turns out goldfish get massive, they eat anything that fits in their mouth, and again, the, the native populations of fish become decimated by goldfish or carp. So that's the risk with uh, the bang yeah. some species. They start eating up other fish. Yeah. What about and they're fish? just super hardy. Like they can resist you know, a nuclear fallout, you know, so they're just super competitive. We've been killing it. We're at an hour and six. So last question. What if I want a, a shark? And just that alpha male idiot jock who just wants to sit down and shout floating around. Uh, what would you recommend right off the bat? Well, you say, How much room do you have? And that's the first question is you're going to need a 500 gallon or more, ideally more like thousands of gallon aquarium to really adequately sustain those sort of sharks. And really, exactly, you know, you're someone that doesn't really care about animal welfare, you just care about your, your, your machismo mm-hmm. and more than anything else. And, Frankly, unless you're gonna do it right and build a five thousand gallon, twenty thousand aquarium, you can do it. But hey, if you and, you're, and you're gonna be honest, the, you can the bank. If you can bankroll a twenty thousand aquarium, do it. Right. My I think that's so key is, is not bullshitting and, and being honest. We talking about that. Yeah, he's, gonna, honest. Yeah, he's gonna appreciate that. And, uh, and I think that's uh, the shit. I think uh, there's no point of this because I, I covered just about everything. We killed it. Thank you for doing this, by the way. No, Pleasure, man. I think I think it's important. You it's know, not the time, you know, I'm gonna give you that bullshit lecture, that uh, 30 second, 60 second video because you should constantly just keep giving knowledge about everything that you drop here, right? And you become the source, which you already have from referrals and so forth. That's how Intel found you. Um, it's only affecting in a positive way because I can't fake that because I don't have the knowledge, right? You do so. What other value can you give, right? It's, uh, so that's just my thing. Unsolicited advice. Let's keep dropping knowledge. You're a smart dude. That's going to go a long way. You know, I've thought about using my own blog. You know, that's yes. And if you brand, don't like video, separate from if you don't like video. There's other ways. There's just blogs. To, there's other. There's other shit. Yeah. Just to get my thoughts out there because um, absolutely. Now, well, that's you know, I know there's a whole universe of yeah. trade shows for like-minded people like yourself, right? What is yeah. the like CES for technology? There's a MACNA, which is a marine aquarium, uh, North America. Association, they run a big conference. There's Super Zoo and Inner Zoo in Germany. Super Zoo's in the Vegas. There's quite a the few. German, the Germans are smart, man. They are. They are Europe has smart. a really cool. Is it, what, what did you, were you in, oh, you're in London? You're in Germany. But they appreciate it. They appreciate things like the that. Europeans, the Asian countries, it's massive. You know, this hobby is massive in those countries. And it's massive in America. And hopefully, they're going to make it even bigger. So, so let's see if I uh, missed anything on it. What a nerd. So basically say that how valuable the aquarium is, right? It's obviously, it's, that account knows it's going to make his uh, house plays higher. You know that, right? But that's another it's value. This okay. is obvious. You know, aquarium is an interesting one. For some people, it can definitely be an asset. He wants to come in. Yes, being in his office. And also, I, I think the impressiveness for his clientele. You know, an aquarium, for a lot, people can be a status. And there's a lot of stories of basketballers and stuff. That. As far as marketing, it's impressive. That bar and sack could have went under just by calling themselves that niche. Everybody knows them top of mind. I just saw you the first time in years, and you knew what I was talking about. Yeah, I How beneficial is that for them to just paying the bills, right? Keeping things going. They're the... Uh, Gives them that edge that you know, 
there's a lot of dive bars out there, but not a lot with a mermaid in it, right? And who wants, who doesn't want to take their friends to that cool dive bar with a mermaid? Right, last question. Do you believe in mermaids? <laughs> Are there mermaids? Do you think that there's... <laughs> It's like, uh, I want to believe. I want to believe. believe. It's, like, it's like unicorns. It's like that horse in in, uh, in man. Um, no, I, I think you did awesome. Can't talk about turtles. Uh, this is a hilarious talk. We talked about the cleaning fish. Uh, let's go get drunk. Uh, no, but uh, thank you guys uh, for watching too. I, I got the other video running in the background. I'm gonna upload this and do my thing like we talked about. But um, Peace out, peoples, and thank you to, to Kent and to Kyle. Let me just hit your desk the entire time. Uh, shout out to all of our cougars somewhere around there. We'll eventually see this. Yeah, Zach Lane's getting in the corner. Is he? He got one. He's going to try to get some fish to us. Shout out to Zach. He's going to be blowing up your phone. What if I... He's hitting me up. Chris Marzano's brother. Yeah. He's hitting me up. It's funny. There's a lot of people, you can surprise, follow his right. hobby, and, and this is... Before they knew me, and now right. And they underestimate how much work, how much knowledge comes into it. And the only way to change that is educate. Right? Perception changes. That we, well, they knew. Yeah. They're, 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 they 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 inform themselves and they got the right mindset. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you, brother. We go way back. Uh, I appreciate you coming on uh, the show with Kent. We're at Aqua Lab Aquarium. Lab Aquarium. Check us out at aqualabaquarium.com. We're on Hill as well. Love it. Look at the businessman. Peace.